Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monte, and this is a three-year weekly candle chart of the CBOE Market Volatility Index, ticker symbol VIX. Before I zoom in to the long stretch of red candles right here, I just want to point out that we have an upward trend right here with higher lows. And so that trend still pointing higher, but most importantly, if you look at these stochastics down here, we have the widest divergence between the K and the D that we've had in years. Not only that, but the three-year reading is the lowest we've had in three years as well. And in addition to that, we have an oversold condition on the CCI down here. So we are long overdue for a green candle right there. And if I go and zoom in just a little bit more, you're going to see that this gap has filled right here. This is an open gap that now is filled this week. And if you're following the gap fill rules for the VIX, we have 100% probability now that the VIX is going to reverse after that gap fill. And that's number one. Number two, if I zoom in to the daily chart, I'm going to do something I've done before and it's worked out every single time. If I go in and put some cycle lines on here, you'll see that if I start at this low, the very low at the bottom of the chart there, and I extend that out, you can see that we are right at a cycle low. What does that mean? Well, if you go back and look at the calendar, every single time we've hit the cycle line, we've had major rallies on the VIX after that cycle low was reached, and we're right on it right now. So again, I'm forecasting that the VIX is going to go higher. I have my target set right there at 29.51. That is still in place. And again, if I zoom in a little bit more, we have an inverted hammer right there. As the CCI is starting to turn up and as the stochastics is turning up on this daily chart right here. So that combined with this wide divergence from the moving average, I mean, it looks like the markets are set to sell off next week. We'll have to see what the retail numbers look like on Black Friday. We'll have to see what the Cyber Monday numbers look like. They may or may not disappoint. We'll have to see. But the way it looks right now, the VIX is extremely Oversold. Now that brings me to the spiders, ticker symbol SPY. And you can see here that we have this small body candle right there known as a spinning top on much lower volume. Now, yes, we have a holiday today, market closed early, so that volume is fairly insignificant. But for the weekly volume, we carry more weight in the weekly volume because traders are going to trade whether there's a holiday or not. They'll just jam their trades in into the remaining hours that are left in the market. And so will the money managers. They still have to manage risk as well. But you're going to see that that spinning top is most important because it's right at a key resistance here. And then we have another gap fill resistance up at the top. So as I mentioned on the midweek market report, this line right here, I said that I'll most likely keep that in place. So that downside target right there is still in place right there. And that is 387.45. Now, one other thing, I point out negative divergences all the time because they're very significant. We had a higher high on Wednesday with a lower high on the CCI. See that? Negative divergences are very important. You have to keep an eye on that. We had a negative divergence right here where we had higher highs on price. And we had the CCI showing lower highs as well as the stochastics showing lower highs. So that is all backing up for a forecast next week of lower prices. So now if we go to the Qs, QQQ, basically representing the tech sector, you can see overall that we still have a downward trend going. There's nothing that's changed there. We're still in this downward trend. Lower highs followed by lower lows. Dow theory states that a downward trend is just that and that the trend will continue until the trend line is broken. So the trend line is still in place. We have this very small bearish harami right here, a little body candle. It's red falling within the green body from Wednesday. And, of course, the oscillators are moving lower. So we're still going to keep that target in place right there on the Qs for 275.90.
Now, if we look at the diamonds, we're going to see pretty much the same thing. Diamonds, same thing. We have the negative divergence on the CCI. See, we have a lower high followed by higher price highs. We have this wide divergence from that moving average right there. We do have a gap below the market right here that will act as a price magnet. And so that downside target is not changing at all. If you're one of our option members, then we're just going to continue to take in the credits as we roll our put spreads like we've been doing and taking in the cash. And in turn, that cash lowers the cost basis of the puts that we own. So it's working out very well for our option traders as we continue to make money from, from time erosion. And John Nigerian and I did a webinar. I don't know if you had a chance to look at that, but on the Market Rebellion homepage, it was posted there and, and you could still go back and even on YouTube and look at some of the comments that I made about how we're doing the dance with the market. So it's working out very well for us. Now, one other thing about the diamonds. Yes, this is a holiday week, like I mentioned, but look at the weekly chart on this one. Again, this is the weekly chart. We've been seeing a drop on the volume, very consistent drop in that volume. And look at the wide divergence between the K and the D on the stochastics. Again, we don't see that often, but when we do see these wide divergences between the blue and the red, which is the K and the D, then we generally see pretty good sell-offs in the market. So keep your stops in place if you're long. Keep your puts and your put spreads in place if you're short and continue to follow along with us. And finally, if we look at IWM, which is the small cap ETF, you can see this is a weekly chart. Again, still in a downward sloping trend right here. There it is. Lower highs, lower lows. It's more of a trading channel that we have right here. And looking at that weekly chart, because it takes precedent over the daily chart, you can see that, again, we have this wide divergence between the K and the D. We have this drop in volume, as we mentioned. And so these downside targets are still very much in place. If I go to the daily chart, you'll see what's happening right here. That downside target was almost hit a week ago, but I extended that downside target to 170.55, which is this gap fill area right here. So not too much to report as far as our targets, but there's a lot to report on the geopolitical forefront here because, as I mentioned many times before, keep your eye on the World Economic Forum website. Keep your eyes on China because a lot of what I'm reporting here is not being reported in the mainstream media. And this came out on November 10th through the World Economic Forum talking about gold and why so many central banks are buying gold. And if you dig into this article that they have posted on the World Economic Forum, you can see that the central banks continue to accumulate gold with purchases estimated at a quarterly record of nearly 400 tons. Now, this is incredible because I've been trading gold and silver for 40 years. I've never seen anything like this. But as I decided to dig in a little bit more to the story, we found some charts here that were pretty shocking. Now, notice how the World Council is reporting on the central bank gold purchases. Again, central bank being mentioned there once again. And look at this bar right here. This is absolutely incredible. Never before have we seen this kind of a purchase. Something big is brewing here, and we have to keep our eyes on what's happening. Here's another look. According to the World Gold Council, Again, they're mentioning central banks as compared to the total bar and coins that are available. And again, look at the blue compared to the other blue bars. It's absolutely tremendous. But if you dig in a little bit more, this came out from Tokyo that it looks like China is the one coming and buying all the gold. And this is an article that's coming out of Commodities Magazine where it's showing that China is thought to be the one stockpiling gold to cut the greenback dependence. Now, again, this is a story I've been talking about, that you have the BRICS nations, you have Russia, you have China, you have Brazil, India, South Africa. They are all working very closely to attack the dollar. This is a currency war that we are seeing. And the U.S. is doing nothing but taking on more debt, suffering from that debt in the form of high inflation, and these nations are doing very well as compared to what the U.S. is doing with regard to them buying assets to back their currencies. So I think that if you look at what's happening in India alone, 
Look at their gold reserves, how it's doubled in the last 12 years. So this, this is tradingeconomics.com. And not only is the Indian gold reserves doubling over that time period, but look what's happening to the European states and how they're selling gold. Big, big difference. This is a an extreme contrast where, again, India, the BRICS nations, are accumulating gold. And, of course, the European nations are selling gold. So this is not a good thing if you want to control the oil markets and the petrodollar. So the U.S. is in deep trouble right now. And the headlines just keep stacking one on top of the next. Just connect the dots, like I say all the time. And the BRICS currency project is what they are working on to literally attack the dollar and remove it as the petrodollar. Keep looking at these BRICS nations. You can see the headlines once again. This is a global reserve currency that's going to undermine the U.S. dollar supremacy. This is not being hidden at all. It's out there. The key is that it's not being reported in the U.S. and in the financial news programs that we see all the time. This one caught my eye because, remember, this is Davos now, the World Economic Forum. This is the key word, destroy the commercial banks. This is a central bank digital currency coming in to destroy the commercial banks. What would happen if some of these commercial banks, you look at Bank of America, you look at J.P. Morgan, you look at Citigroup, what's going to happen if they come under attack by the CBDC? the central bank digital currency. Well, that's the plan. That's exactly what is being planned right here. And when you look at the opportunities for us, if you're planning ahead and you are connecting the dots, like I say, then there's a lot of money to be made here. Now, with regard to inflation, well, why is that? Because we keep printing dollars and the Fed is doing nothing to control inflation. We've seen news headlines recently that the Fed minutes are leading us to believe that they're going to slow down in the interest rate hikes but what will that do? That's going to give a green light to inflation. It's only going to get worse. So the Fed is basically caught between a rock and a hard place. There's nothing they can do here that's going to make things good for our economy either way. And I believe my own opinion, based on what I'm seeing, is that we're going to continue to see stagflation, which is inflation combined with a prolonged recession. This is, again, the change in the CPI the, the net change that we've seen is the highest in more than 40 years. In this period, from this low to this high right here, is over 9% change. And it does not look like this is going to start reversing and going the other way. So again, keep your eye on what the Fed's doing or what the Fed is not doing. And then see how that's going to play out with regard to our economy. You know... This is something that came out of the Wall Street Journal, basically talking about Americans planning to buy fewer gifts this year and donate less to charity. See, these are leading indicators. When we look at headlines like this, you have to say, okay, what does that really mean? Is it just a human interest story? Or is this something that carries a lot of economic value? Well, I see it as an economic leading indicator that will ultimately bring us and the entire markets right down. I've talked about this before, but this is another chart. Look at the record number of revolving debt that consumers are taking on as compared to their savings rate. Consumer debt is at all-time high, and we have the savings rate dropping to a new low. This divergence right here is a recipe for disaster. While that sounds very ominous and dark, that dark cloud hanging over our heads, we have to keep an eye on the charts. Look at gold. And I talked about on the midweek report, I said I was going to look at silver. Let me look at silver first for you. This is a daily chart of silver. But look at the weekly chart. This is fascinating because if you look at the pattern that's forming right here on the weekly chart, this looks very much like a cup and a handle forming. So if we break out over the brim, which is just over $21, the cup and handle pattern generally leads to a breakout that is equal to the depth of the cup from the brim. So this could bring us right up to this resistance level right here. And if you look at gold, again, gold is in the headlines, but silver is the better value because the gold-silver ratio is so far out of whack that gold is really outshining silver and silver has been undervalued but you still have this cup and handle forming right here 
right there on the gold market with the brim more or less up here at the 165 level for GLD. And if that breakout occurs, then we can see gold going all the way back to fill the gap right here. So I am completely back into my silver position. I make that very public how I trade it. I sold some a couple of weeks ago, scaled out of 30% of my position, bought it all back. I'm now back 100% into my silver position. I'm very happy about that. And if you again look at the weekly chart, this is very, very close to a bullish Harami after following a bearish Harami right here. And so there's still a gap on silver up here around 22 and a half. And again, if it breaks out of that brim, we could see much higher prices. So that is it for this week. Stay tuned to Market Rebellion because next Wednesday, I will be doing another midweek report right after the market closes on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Stay tuned. And for the members of Market Rebellion, we're making some very good changes. If you are a member, you won't have to put all your information in to get the midweek market report. It's just going to come right out on your member page. and You could click and play and, and go from there. And you don't have to type in your email or, or name or anything like that. So, folks, enjoy the rest of this weekend. And we'll talk to you next time. So long.